Hey guys, welcome to Cinema Drinking Buddies. I'm Matt and he's Gio. And today we're going to be doing our first ever instant review on the new movie, Greyhound. Yes, and I am drinking today for our instant review, a Coors Light. Awesome. I am drinking some Tullamore Dew Irish Whiskey Cider Cask Finish. Uh, this was actually featured in our Irish Whiskey video that we uploaded yesterday. So if you like Irish Whiskey, you might want to go check that one out. Ooh, but awesome. um, yeah, we're going to be doing... A spoiler-free review here of the movie Greyhound, at least to start the video off, and then we will get into spoilers later on in the video, but we'll let you know before we actually start talking spoilers. So if you haven't seen the movie yet, you'll know when you want to turn the video off before we start talking about it. Until then, you know, we're just going to uh, sit here and talk about the movie. So the movie just came out today on uh, Apple TV+, Plus, or actually it might be yesterday by the time this video gets uploaded. Gio, what did you think of the movie? Well, I actually thought it was pretty entertaining, mm -hmm. um, especially being uh, Apple TV Plus. And the odd thing is I had Apple TV Plus for a while now, and I haven't seen any shows or any movies on there. So this is my first actual movie on that TV Plus. And for being on Apple TV Plus, I thought the production, dialogue, acting, and things in that part is actually pretty well done. The cinematography is pretty well done. The suspense mm -hmm. it was there. So that, that, was always, uh, that was a pretty good thing. Uh, how about you? Yeah, I liked it. So like this movie was originally supposed to be released in theaters on June 12th, but because of COVID-19, it was uh, delayed. And then Apple ended up getting the distribution rights to the movie. And that's why they released it on Apple TV Plus. So it wasn't it wasn't specifically made for Apple TV Plus. It's just how it ended up getting released because of COVID-19. Um, oh, I see. OK. All right. Yeah. So that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. But yeah, like you said, uh, the movie was really good. It was a short movie. It was like an hour and a half long, which is kind of unheard of for <laughs> movies these days. But they they used the time well, and I think that if they had tried to string the movie out longer, that it that it wouldn't have that they that there would have been a lot of unnecessary uh, scenes in the movie. I, I felt like they they filled the time really well. Like you said, a lot of suspense. It kept you on the edge of your seat. Um, it was good. I thought Tom Hanks did a really good job. All the actors in the movie did a did a really good job, and uh, yeah, I liked it. <laughs> I, I, I thought so too. I'm sure if I saw this movie in a theater, I wouldn't be disappointed. It, it didn't feel like it dragged on at any point. It, it, like you were saying that it, they used their that moments wisely. Mm -hmm. Trying to not talk spoilers here, but it, it's kind of a sort of a a war movie. So, you know, typically movies like that are a little bit on the longer side, but um, this particular one wasn't. And I think that they were smart to keep it short. A lot of suspense, like from from the start of the movie, you're like in it. You know, there's no, mm -hmm. it doesn't like build up to the suspense. That, that suspense lasts the whole movie. And I think two, two and a half hours of that might have been a little bit too much. Yeah. There was really no downtime in the movie. So mm -hmm. like even up till the end of the movie, uh, I was still like at the edge of my seat, um, yeah. expecting something to happen, but nothing uh, then kind of like the mo movie ended from there. So uh, it just, there was no like real, real uh, downtime. And the downtimes I do give, they only last a couple of minutes and then all of a sudden it's back into it again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's our spoiler free portion of it. It's very, very short, but um, please do go watch it. It's a, a, a very, very good movie, especially if you're into uh, war movies. And if you're not, um, it, I, I would still recommend it. Um, and so now we're going into our spoiler zone. So if you like, uh, you can certainly click off. If you don't mind spoilers, then uh, you can certainly continue watching it. All right. So to start off the movie, uh, it actually starts off on a um, the, the ship that they're on, I believe it's a destroyer that they're on. Yeah. Um, and so that's the ship that they're currently on, which is a battleship. They're actually, uh, just to go into a quick plot detail, they're actually moving cargo from the United States, United States to Britain. Britain. Was it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. To yeah. Liverpool. And so during that part, uh, going there, there's a bunch of, um, U boats, which are German submarines. Mm -hmm. Uh, and there's a specific, uh, U boat that's called the Wolf Pack. And so from there, they have to get past through it. They have to make sure that the destroyer is able to stop them while with a couple of other ships that are with it. And so that's basically the main storyline. And so it's just that journey that they have mm -hmm. to go through. And it's not a, a short journey. They're actually on on the water for uh, a long what, time. Four? Oh, yeah. Well, so I don't know exactly how many, how yeah, many are on I, the water, but it's a pretty long time. 
I, I know that the the what the movie takes place because they're already in the water. Uh, mm -hmm. It's like a about three days, four days that they're actually in the water during that time is what the movie takes place of. Yeah, I, believe, I think. Right? Yeah, probably about three days because the the little the little thing that comes up the caption uh, says Wednesday fifty hours to air cover. So they when they leave the United States they have air cover basically planes flying with them to you know mm -hmm. help them if they do get attacked. But then there's a point to where the the planes can't fly out any further. They have to go back, mm -hmm. but they're not close enough to Britain for that air support to come help them. So they've got what's called the Black Pit, which is basically like 50 hours of time where it's just the boats. There's no aerial support. Yeah. So they're more prone to being attacked at that point. So that basically this movie takes place during that 50 hour time frame. And uh, I looked it up. And that is actually, that was actually like a real thing. The Black Pit was the actual name for it back uh, during World War II. The German U-boats knew that this was the point where these ships were most vulnerable. And they would a lot of times just kind of sit and wait for these ships to get to that point in the ocean where there was no more aerial, um, aerial support and they would attack them at that point. Mm -hmm. So yeah, this, this movie, while... The characters, even the names of the ships and things like that were fictitious. This is actually based on a book called The Good Shepherd. All the all the events were pretty, even though they didn't happen to these specific people because these specific people, you know, don't exist. These are things that actually happened during the war. So I thought it was kind of kind of neat to see all that through the eyes of, you know, these fictitious characters in this in this boat. Oh, and this takes place uh I think 1941 was it? Is that when it takes place? I believe. Um, February 1942. 42. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. So it's within that time frame of after or basically in the middle of World War II. Yeah, like smack in the middle of it. Like I said, the movie takes place during that 50-hour time frame from where they lose the aerial support from the United States and they're traveling to Britain waiting to get back into the range where they get the aerial support from Britain. And during this time, they're just being hit by, by U-boats. These U-boats are kind of lying in wait for them. And it's nonstop, like edge of your seat. I was stressed out watching this movie. Mm -hmm. I mean, I can just imagine how, I mean, I, I can't imagine, I should say, how it felt to actually be in that situation, to be on one of those ships transferring cargo to Britain under the constant fear of being attacked by these submarines. Yeah. Their battle strategy was very, very, um, it, it made it that much more intense where mm -hmm. they were able to just basically follow them, sneak up behind them, um, or at some point still get in the middle of them. So that way they can't really shoot at each other. They can't shoot, do cross firing. So they know that. And so they, they did that. They do those things on purpose. So yeah, uh, their strategy is very, very, actually very impressive. Yeah throughout the movie, they were getting called by the gray wolf, which was one of the German U boats and basically mm -hmm. just, you know, taunting them and saying, you know, you and the other ships are going to, you know, sink to the bottom of the ocean and just, yeah. you know, taunt after taunt after taunt. Just playing these mind games with them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There, there's a couple of ships that went down, uh, during, during this crossing. Um, what was it like four, three ships went down and then two ships got damaged within it. I think he said that, and I, I wrote it down here when I was watching it, they lost seven ships and two were damaged based off of what the British uh, commander said and you know all the, all the cheering that was going on at the end of the movie. Um, hmm. I think the Greyhound actually did a pretty good job of keeping the fleet safe for the most part. Because, yeah, they, he said that they lost seven ships, but... Um, I mean, I don't know how many it was common to lose were, in one yeah. of those voyages. If if that's a low number, they everyone seemed to think that he did a really good job. Uh, they were asking him how many crossings have he done, and he said that was his first crossing as well. Mm -hmm. So just to be under a net immense stress doing your first crossing, yeah. and to get out of it, and also um, take out four U boats during that time, which is um, really impressive in that part. You know, one thing that they kept showing during the movie is that Tom Hanks character, um, Ernie Krauss, um, he never slept. He never ate. Um, he was on his feet for basically the whole time. And it showed like at the end of the, at the end of the, or toward the end, I should say of the 50 hours, he had bruises on his, or not bruises, but blisters on his feet 
where he had yeah, that guy which, go get him his slippers and, and, and he showed him start bleeding. Yeah. And throughout the movie, you saw the other crew members, you know, people would come up to him saying, Hey, I'm here to relieve you. Um, so, you know, they would kind of take shifts, so to speak, but he didn't, mm-hmm. he was up and about no sleeping, no eating. I think he had coffee, but, um, he was just, he was just nonstop. And you could tell like toward the end of all that, that he was getting tired. Like even before yeah, the, the attack stopped, you could tell that he was just getting really tired as you know, anyone would in that situation. Another thing to mention, like one of the, I guess not low parts, but not as fast paced parts of the movie was after the Greyhound got hit by the submarine, like the Greyhound got hit by the U-boat. Um, it got hit high, like on the deck. So it didn't, you know, it was, it was, it wasn't like sinking or anything, but there were, there were three crew members who died Mm -hmm. and, you know, they took the time to have, you know, the funeral for them, which I thought was really, really nice. Yeah. Um, you know, that they, in the middle of all this still found time to honor, you know, their fallen, you know, servicemen. The only other thing in the movie that kind of, I don't know, like we, we got a little bit of it, but it, and I don't know if they cut out scenes of this, but at the beginning of the movie, it flashed back to two months earlier where he's meeting his, I guess it's his girlfriend at like, Mm -hmm. I don't know where they were, like at a train station or something. And they're exchanging Christmas gifts. And that was like all we ever like saw of that. Like he had like a flashback to her later on, but she never really came back in the movie at any point. Um, yeah, I think it was um, the actor from, uh, or the actress from Karate Kid. I don't know. I know she was in Cocktail, Elizabeth Shue. She was in Cocktail, yeah. Adventures in Babysitting. We didn't really see much else of her. So I don't know if, like I said, if just scenes with her got cut out. I kind of thought at the end of the movie, we were going to see those two, you know, get reunited and mm-hmm. maybe married or something, but uh, we never saw that. Uh, anyway, so before we sign off here, uh, final thoughts on the movie? Um, yep, I, I recommend it. Go see it. Um, it's an enjoy- enjoyable, watchable. Uh, it's a oh, a great movie is what it is. So I enjoyed it. Yeah, definitely. Definitely must watch. And like I said, it's very easy to watch since it's on you know streaming service that you can get for free, at least for seven days. Um, mm-hmm. So yeah, definitely, definitely watch that movie. Um it's not gonna you know you're not gonna come away from it you know feeling like it wasted your time it's a short movie um it's a good movie there's not really any you know make sure you go to the bathroom before it because there's not really many opportunities for bathroom breaks during the movie Mm -hmm. but uh yeah i really liked it and i'm glad we watched it yep same here all right so that's our uh instant reaction for the movie greyhound um for new movies that are going to be coming out, we'll definitely go and uh, do these more often. Yeah. And that's we're basically Cinema Drinking Buddies. And please like, subscribe, uh, leave a comment below. Think about um, what you thought about the movie. Uh, if you did enjoy it or didn't enjoy it, then let us know. Yeah, definitely. Uh, follow us on Twitter at Buddy Cinema. Uh, every Friday, we upload a review slash discussion video about just a random movie that we've picked. Uh, This month, July, is actually Disaster Movie Month, so we are going to be reviewing disaster movies this month. We have so far uh, reviewed and discussed Independence Day and Twister, uh, so we still have five more Friday or three more Fridays uh, and three more disaster movies. So uh, come join us um, for a movie discussion, and we're also doing whiskey tastings, so that'll be fun too. Yep. All right. Bye. Yep. Bye.